Hey guys, I'm Bella Sims, and I'm a 3D artist who makes custom content for The Sims 4. Today is something a little bit different, but in a way that I think you'll like. In the past, I've been very against doing tutorials because I'm not that great at explaining things, simplifying things down, and even though I never claim to be an expert, everyone is a critic. Recent videos have been time lapses of the majority of the process and talking about it from a retrospective point, but today I'm going to walk through how I created the pixel art meets pearl bead style Stardew Valley earrings. I made a lot of these for a mega jewelry set that I made, so I've had a pretty good workflow going and I streamed a lot of the process over on Twitch, so I'm going to go into a lot more detail today. I would consider this to be more of an intermediate process because it involves 3D modeling and some basic understanding, but now enough blabbling and let's get to it. I think an important first step to creating content is to not really create at all. Uh, I think a lot about how I'm going to create these earrings and the process that I need to take. Especially through trial and error, you will pick up on things that you need to keep in mind and look out for and think ahead of time. Here's my example. The texture space for earrings in The Sims isn't very big, and I worry that if I was to just paste in an image of the pixel art onto a plane, the texture would be blurred and the edges wouldn't line up very perfectly. So the mesh itself I will divide into individual faces representing each of the pixels, which means the UV of each of these pixels I can scale down to pretty much just nothing and assign a basic color. So the first step I need to make is to actually make the texture rather than creating the model. I have an earring hook that I made a long time ago and I just use that as a base for all of the earrings that I want to hang from this kind of jewelry finding. Why make the same mesh 50 times over if I can just use one I'm already happy with? To make it, I just added in a reference image of an earring hook, added in a cylinder with five points and scaled it down. By extruding out the face and rotating it along the reference, scaling it out when it gets to the thicker parts, I get a pretty good copy. And I know I'm moving a little bit too fast for what I'm doing in the background, but I'm going to try and show you the entire process as much as possible so you can follow along if this is something you would like to try out and maybe learn something from as well. I have sped this footage up a bit too, it just takes some time to be precise with all the details and that is something really important to me and my work. One last thing I need is a ring to connect the earring hook to the pixel art pendant and for that I just use a torus. Just make sure to change the values to make it low poly. I apparently don't do that at this step though, even though it would be best to at this point, so you won't see it here, but I do do it later, don't worry. To scale it true to size, you can append in a head mesh that you can get from Sims 4 Studio by searching head and exporting the mesh. Now, I know I just said that I start making the texture before the mesh, but this earring mesh I had made ages ago, so I didn't really consider it part of my process for making it. I import this specific image into Blender to use as a guide to place my UV. It shows the different regions to which each type of object must be contained within. I unwrap things like jewelry hardware and chains very simply by just aligning my view to the side and unwrap from view making sure to leave enough space so that I can add in my pixel colors on the left side later. Add in a new material to the earring hook, create a new texture of 2048 by 4096, transparent, and I can add in some simple texture by filling it in gray. I add in some shading and that's pretty much it for now. This texture I'm going to use as a template to build all of my other pixel art earring textures from later. While I'm working on the texturing here, I'll talk a little bit more about the next step when we move on to the 2D image editing. Pretty much any 2D image editing software will do. I personally choose to use Clip Studio Paint because I've transitioned away from using Photoshop. I've also personally used Sketchbook, which is free but more of a digital painting program. Critter, which is also free and pretty decent. It may just take some getting used to from other programs, at least it did for me. GIMP I've used back in the day, it's pretty decent, and Photopea, Photopia, not sure how it's pronounced, but that is an in-browser Photoshop dupe, which is pretty good for when you don't need it to do much, but just a little bit. 
In Clip Studio Paint, I use the same reference template to create my bounds behind the earring texture that I made. This is just a 128 by 256 pixel rectangle, and it is the absolute most amount of space I can use for each earring. Now, on to creating the actual fun part of the texture. Ignore that I have other colors down here already. I was just working on a different sprite before doing Abigail. I'm replacing the colors anyways, but it makes no difference to starting on a blank slate. I will mention though that a clipping layer will be super beneficial to stay within the bounds of your background rectangle. I color pick directly from the game sprites and I lay them out into smaller blocks of color. There's really no right or wrong way to do this, but to make things easier for my brain to understand, I worked from darkest to lightest color in sections. So I would start on the hair first and then I would do the skin color, then I would do the clothing and just kind of work my way from top to bottom. Then back in Blender, I create a plane and I subdivided it four times to get a 16 by 16 grid. This worked for the smaller pixel art I was doing, but I duplicated it and moved it to essentially just extend my canvas when it came to the larger pixel art pieces. Just make sure to remove the double vertices between the join. Now I can add in my reference image for Abigail. She's my favorite Stardew Valley character. And there's three methods that I went about doing this next step. Choose whichever one works for you. The first was that I just counted and eyeballed to select the negative space pixels to delete them and leave me with the shape. You could also just select the positive space and invert the selection. The other method I tried was a bit of a hit or miss. And this was to scale the reference image to line up with the pixels on the plane and then trace out the shape. This works, but it can't be fiddly going backwards and forwards to line up the sizes properly. And sometimes it just took longer than it would have been to eyeball it. The third method I did for some trickier pixel art was to assign the pixel colors first and then just delete what I didn't use later. And on that note, now that I've deleted the unwanted pixels, let's assign some colors. We need to assign a new material to our mesh and assign the texture that we made. To keep the colors as accurate as possible, you can turn down the specular and up the roughness. This has no impact on the final product in game, but it helps right now when assigning the colors in Blender. But all we need to do is select each of the planes, scale them down to zero on the UV, and then move them to each color. Again, I worked dark to light because that's just what worked for me. Because this is kind of a unique process, I will pause here for a little bit while the time lapse goes and you can kind of see how it starts to all come together. I honestly do think that it's a pretty satisfying to watch as a time lapse, at least after I edit out all of my pauses and me trying to figure out which pixels are colored what. It takes me back to my days of recreating pixel art in Minecraft. Once we are done, I wanted to add some 3 d dimension to the object, so I selected all of the faces and from the side extruded them out. Then I can just line them up with my earring hook and mirror modifier to get two of them. Always be sure to do all of your editing in edit mode so that way you aren't changing the transform of the whole object itself, otherwise the mirror modifier will produce some funky results. If you did move or rotate it in object mode and you're having some issues, in object mode, you can control S to set your cursor to the world origin, just in case that it was moved, and then set your origin to the 3D cursor. Apply your mirror modifier and merge it with your earring hook if it isn't already. Something I like to do is select the pixel art on the side that was mirrored and rotate it 180 degrees so that way the art is accurate to the sprite on both sides, but that's just personal preference. But this is pretty much all we need to do in this version of Blender. So be sure to save your work. It may also help if you rename your object in the hierarchy to something you'll recognize. I just named it Abigail. From Sims 4 Studio, I'm just going to clone an earring and export that mesh. 
Now in Blender 2.76, open up this blend file and then we can append our mesh from the new version. Why do we use an older version of Blender? Well, there's some tools for Simsful Studio that are essential to making custom content for our file to be readable. It is possible to just do everything in this version of Blender, but my steps won't be as accurate as a lot has changed between versions and I just like using the newer ones. So I just like to create my objects in the newest version, then have a compatible file in the old version and replace everything with my new content. Anyway, in this version of Blender, there's a few things that we need to do. Firstly, I moved the original earrings up and out of the way to make things a bit easier. And I do this in edit mode, not object mode. On our new mesh, we need to rename the UV map to UV underscore zero. Then we can merge it with the original mesh. The next thing that I do is weights and earrings are super easy for this. We just select everything and assign it 100% to the head bone. I remove it from all the others just to make sure. Next up is Vertex Paint, which tells the game which sliders it interacts with. Again, earrings are super simple. The hex code you want is 007F00. And this is just something that I remember off the top of my head from doing it so much, but either look at the original mesh you are replacing for the Vertex hex code, or there are resources on the Sims 4 Studio forums. Lastly, the UV underscore one map, which controls the morphing when you use said sliders. Because we merged it with the original that already had this map, our new mesh is scaled to nothing at the origin. Select both the original and the new earrings on one side, then roughly move the new mesh UV to the center of the old mesh and do the same for the right. Earrings don't have to be too precise as there is very little morphing that does happen, so this is good enough. Now we can delete out the old earrings and then just save our blend file. Back in Sims 4 Studio, we import our new blend file and import our diffuse texture. For the swatch color, right clicking in the box lets you color pick or you can manually choose up to three colors. I have this work in progress thumbnail that I use to easily find my content in game when I'm testing and I do all of my tags. Just save the package file, put that in your mods folder and test it out in game. As I said, this isn't a full on tutorial, but this is an easy project to do once you've kind of got the hang of things. If you aren't up to this stage, there's an abundance of proper tutorials on the Sims 4 Studio forums that are especially beginner friendly. There's tutorials which will walk you through basic custom content recolors if you've never even tried it before, and working you up to more complicated projects like your first 3D model. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if there's something else that you would like to see or learn how to do, and I'll see what I can do. I'll see you next time.